Welcome back to the show. Uh, we're going to be talking about a million dollar intuition deal with Nate Ginsburg, and uh, we'll be looking at how his intuition helped him from quitting his first business five years ago, and also why now he absolutely has to follow his intuition no matter what, and how he deals with the doubt that still comes up uh, when he gets these intuitive messages. Uh, and we'll look at how his intuition helped with uh, selling one of his businesses and how he uses radical candor, and we'll explain what that is in the episode, uh, when he was having to do some staff cutbacks and also dealing with underperforming team members and other tough situations in this business. And if we have time, we'll talk about transparency and how that applies to businesses and how he hones his business intuition. So welcome, Nate. Thank you, Michael. So you, we're in your first business five years ago and you were thinking of quitting, uh, um, but your intuition said, no, don't do that. Keep going. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was about five years ago exactly now. And yeah, this was my, my, my first business, my first real, you know, full fledged jump into entrepreneurship. And uh, at this point it, it, it wasn't going so great. You know, I basically had spent all my money. Uh, I was living in Chicago at the time, savings, you know, spent. And I was faced with some, with some tough decisions. Uh, namely, do I, do I look for a job? Do I get a job? Or do I, you know, keep on pursuing my, my, my business dreams? And, uh, you know, at this time, I uh, tried to get advice from from as anyone that I could to, to help, you know, guide me towards, towards, you know, what decision to make. And thankfully I was able to, you know, chat with a lot of smart people and got some good advice. And, you know, while that was useful and while it's great to be able to, you know, get ideas and bounce ideas from, from smart people, um, you know, as at this time it, as I was working through this decision, uh, the, you know, really what became the, the, the most, you know, dominant, uh, you know, player in, in what was going to dictate what I did was, was, was really this feeling inside that, you know, I knew that deep down I, I wanted and needed to, to, to keep on, you know, pursuing this dream that I had, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't feel that I was done yet and n not that getting a job would have been, you know, done yet but but yeah but but I, I had this feeling and i knew and there there came a point where i was i was talking to people getting their advice but after a certain point i uh stronger than any of the words that i heard was was the feeling inside telling me that you know yeah like you know you you can keep going you know you've got more and uh, so i listened to that voice and moved back home cut my expenses to to keep on working on the business and once I did that, honestly, that was kind of, well, the, the bottom. And then once I, once I made that move and, and, and followed what I, what I knew I had to do was when things started to come together. And, you know, it was that, you know, by, by following my intuition and listening to what I knew I had to do, that then led me on this path that, you know, fast forward and, 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 and here I am today. Wow. So maybe your intuition knew what was coming. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, it, it seems in, in my life and a lot of the big decisions or uh, things that come up where I, I really need to, you know, dig deep to decide what to do. I've, I've learned to, to really listen to that, to that voice inside and that gut instinct. And this being one example of when I do that and I, I listen to that voice and when I take that first step out in that direction, it seems the universe just listens and responds and then helps, you know, conspire to, to keep pushing me, you know, towards that direction that I knew to be true. And I know that has to be because it's, it's, it's what I know I have to do. And, you know, the universe is aware and supports me following that. And so when, when I do that and take that first step, you know, other things seem to fall into place. What, what's the recent example where that's happened for you? Uh, the universe helped made things happen that made you realize that, yeah, your intuition was right. Well, uh, 
you know, with selling my business recently uh, was the biggest, you know, biggest business decision event that has happened to me in my career. And it was, you know, it, it wasn't uh, an easy or, you know, straightforward as these things go. Uh, mine was very much a, you know, it was a, a negotiation. I was meeting with the potential buyer and we were, you know, going back and forth and try, you know, trying to see if we could work something out. And, and during this process, I, again, was getting a lot of, you know, ideas and feedback and, and, and listening to other people's opinions on what they thought I should do. And so, so we're, we're in these negotiations, we're meeting and, or, you know, ha having these meetings and, and, and talking and, you know, deep down, I, I, I knew that this was the right move for my business, for my career at this time. It, it, it felt right. Uh, but at first I, I listened more to some of the voices and, and opinions that were saying to hold out for more, you know, you can get more, you can, you can get more from this deal. Uh, you know, don't take the first offer. And so at first that's what I did. You know, we, we were negotiating, there's an offer on the table and it, I thought it was a good deal. It, it, it felt good, but I, I, I turned it away. And I remember like leaving that office and the, you know, the, the cab ride back to the hotel. And that night I was literally a mess. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I couldn't <laughs> think, um, you know, I, I thought that I made the biggest or was making the biggest, you know, mistake of my, of my career. And it was, it was, it was eating me up inside. I felt, I, I, I heard that voice telling me what I should do, but in this, in this instant, I, I, I went against it and it, it didn't feel, didn't feel good. Uh, mm. Thankfully, a couple days later, we, we resumed talks and, and then I was able to then, you know, presented with a situation to, you know, to, to continue following that instinct and, and accept the deal, which I ended up doing. And, you know, doing that, uh, accepting that, like all those feelings, the doubt, the, the fear, the, um, you know, all that, that like negative energy and feeling that I had when, you know, going against what I, what I, I knew I, I could and should do, you know, it vanished and, you know, fast forward now, that's been the, the most positive and biggest event in, in my career. And, you know, I, uh, almost, you know, almost didn't follow the intuition, almost messed it all up. <laughs> Thankfully was able to come <laughs> back and, and had a, had a chance to, you know, do, do what I knew I should do. And, and it's, it's worked out great. So if you had this to do over and you were, you know, hearing that voice from your intuition, but you had doubts, what, what would you tell your younger self? I would, you know, tell myself to, to be confident in, in following that voice because in my life, all, every time that I've, I've, I've felt that inner voice or that inner pull, um, that gut instinct, every time that I've felt that and followed it, it's worked out well you know, me recognizing that and, and, and taking that first step, like I said, the universe, uh, you know, conspires to, you know, push me forward in that direction. And I, I literally can't think of a single time that I, I followed that instinct and it didn't work out well. It almost, I almost messed it up <laughs> with that business <laughs> deal, <laughs> you know, went against what I, what I thought I, I, I should do. I went against that feeling. Thankfully, it was able to work itself out. And so, yeah, I would tell myself to, you know, trust what I, what I know or what I, what I feel I should do and have confidence to move forward in that direction, knowing that's what, that's what I should do and that the, the universe and, and other circumstances will, will fall into place around that. And, and after you said yes to that particular deal, did the universe, give you information that you've made a good decision? Or? 
Well, once that, so selling, selling that part of the business uh, was, like I said, the biggest event at the time, you know, in my career and what I, what I want in my life and career is, is growth and progress and, you know, moving forward, um, more opportunities, better opportunities, you know, better people. And, and, you know, selling, selling that part of the business, honestly, it then, it, it, uh, propelled me to, to another level and another stage in, in my life and career. And, and since then it's, it's, you know, it's forced me in a lot of ways to consider some really important questions that, that are, uh, you know, not easy to answer, but also if I want, you know, growth and progress are very important stuff. You know, what, what, what do I value? Um, what should I do? What am I best at? Where do I want to go? Who do I want to be with? What's important to me? And, you know, with my goal of, of, you know, progress and, and more opportunities and um, connecting with more, more people, better people, you know, when, when I was able to, you know, kind of take that step up by, by selling the, the part of the business, it then opened me up to these, you know, these new opportunities that I'm now able to pursue now and, and, you know, couldn't be more excited about. And so that's, you know, knowing or feeling that right now my, my life and career and business opportunities now versus when I was, when I was selling the business, you know, now maybe six months ago or five months ago is, is, is crazy. I feel like my, you know, uh, the, the opportunities and the, the direction and progress has, you know, continues to, to level up and, uh, that, that seems like a good indication that I made the right decision. It, it, it feels good now and, uh, and seems to be continuing to move in the direction that I want, which is, is validating. So it sounds like you've, you've got a, 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 like an inner GPS in your gut that you, know, you feel good or bad, depending on if you're going towards or away where your intuition is pointing. Yeah, uh, definitely. And it's, and it's something that I've realized. <laughs> so your inner GPS, how, how do you feel that is for you? Yeah. So I've, 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 I've learned to, you know, really uh, it's, it's become so, so important and powerful to, to tune in and, and, and listen to that inner voice and, one thing that has really allowed me to do that more is uh, the practice of yoga and and meditation. So I've been I've been practicing mm. yoga now for for almost four years, and you know yoga is a way that it allows me to you know kind of to center myself and, and and ground myself and my you know quiet my mind to allow space for that intuition to come through. I've, you know, I, I have a lot of ideas and there's a lot going on, you know, in my head, which uh, at times can be, you know, can be, can be great and useful, but, but, you know, for me, I've, I've learned and realized that I need to be able to, I need to be able to calm that down to make space for the, you know, for the gut feeling, for the instinct, for the intuition to come through. And, and that's why yoga, or one of the reasons why yoga is so important to me, I, I practice yoga three, four, five, six times a week, no matter what, whether I'm in the Philippines or Thailand or America or Hungary or China, I, I always find yoga and it's, it's, it's a non-negotiable for me because I've, I've learned that, that I need that to be able to, to you know, quiet the, the inner chatter, to, to make space for that intuition to come through. So, so that I'm able to, you know, hear it and, and, and act on it. Well, I, I definitely support doing yoga or something like that. It could be Tai Chi or some other exercise or meditation. I, and I do yoga every day and I've done that for about, uh, well, since 2003 ish. So quite a while. Um, but I'm curious, you know, maybe people listening would like to do it, but 
they find trouble doing it because they're busy in their business or maybe they travel. And I mean, how do you do it when you have a busy day? Yeah. So with, with yoga for me, it's uh, honestly on, on days that I want to practice yoga, it's, you know, it's, it's a priority. So today, for example, uh, I had a few calls or meetings scheduled and I also last night, I'm looking at the yoga schedules to see, you know, what, you know, wh- how I can fit yoga in, you know, with these other things. Do I go first thing in the morning? Do I go at lunch? Do I go at night? And uh, today it so happened that the 1230 to 130 that fit, I had 11 o'clock meeting, 1230 to 130 yoga, two o'clock call, three o'clock call, four o'clock call. And, you know, yoga, you know, fit right there in the middle. And, you know, that's, it's not, not a quit, you know, this, this wasn't a, a question. I, today I, I was going to practice yoga. Um, I had these other things going on, but, but I knew that I, you know, that was something that I was going to do today. And so I, you know, found the class and found the, the, you know, was found the schedule that would, would allow me to do that, you know, despite my other obligations. And it's always like that wherever I am, even if I got a busy day, I, I can, you can still find an hour, hour and a half to, to fit in yoga. And how, do you think that adds to your business joy and profits in some way that you, you make this yoga a priority? Um, I mean, definitely yoga, you know, helps give me, you know, so much clarity with, you know, with decisions as well as just, you know, my own head. I, you know, I, I, I try to be mindful. I try to be present and I, I work at being mindful and present, but, but yeah, I think like, like a lot of people, I still, you know, my mind runs away. I get anxious, I get worried. And, and it's, it's through the practice of yoga or, you know, one of the things through practicing yoga, like I said, it allows me to, you know, calm, calm my mind down, reset, recenter, recalibrate. And I've also noticed that a lot of times it's, once like in the middle of yoga practice, which I know you're not supposed to be, you know, thinking, but it's, you know, in the middle of practice when I'm, you know, in the flow and, you know, feeling great and and mind's calm, then all of a sudden I'll have this, you know, spark of business insight. And so it happens like often it's, you know, I'll, I'll be in yoga, I'll be in the middle of a practice, I'll get these ideas. And then after yoga, I'm like sending these voice messages to my team about, oh, you know, here's what we should do this, do this, do that. And, and so, yeah, yoga helps, you know, not just, it, it, it makes me feel better. It makes my mind feel better. And it also, it, it becomes like a catalyst, you know, by, by calming down, it, it allows space for the, you know, connections and, and the intuition to really come through that has led to some, you know, great insight and, and, and great, you know, business moves and decisions. I, I always carry a note, notepad with me so I can and write down the ideas that come to me when I'm doing yoga or dance or whatever the activity is. Um, mm. Just like you, sometimes I get really amazing inspirations. So, um, and I, I don't see any problem myself with, you know, just jotting down a brief idea during the middle of a class. Um, Cause it gets out of my head. Then I don't have to think, will I forget it? <laughs> so, but I, I'm curious uh, when you're talking about your mind that has, you know, all these worries and anxieties when it gets a little carried away, it's almost like you're not your mind. Is that how you see things, Nate? Yeah, uh, I definitely, and I, I would like to, it's, it's not always, not always easy to remember that, but an analogy that a friend you know, a friend, you know, was, was talking about to me that I really like is, you know, our mind, our, our consciousness, our mind, our being, it's like uh, a microscope looking at a Petri dish and <laughs> we, we get caught up when we get caught up. We think, we think that we're the Petri dish, you know, that's, that's being observed, but really, you know, we're, we're the microscope. And so all the worry, the anxiety, that's all, that's all in the Petri dish. And in my better moments, when I'm able to, uh, you know, when I'm able to, to, uh, you know, stay mindful of this, you know, I remember that, you know, no, like I'm, I'm, you know, these worries, I'm not the Petri dish. I'm, I'm the, I'm the microscope. 
the observer and it, you know, put some distance in there and, uh, um, and yeah, helps me to, to, you know, realize and understand that, you know, whatever's going on in my head, it's, it's that, that's, that's not, that's not me. And, and a lot of these, you know, worries, anxieties are totally unfounded. It's just, you know, we're just, uh, thoughts. And so, so recognizing the, the, the space is, is, is powerful. I mean, for me, sometimes those kind of anxious or worrisome thoughts aren't even my own thoughts. They're thoughts I've borrowed from someone else. I, I don't uh, know if that happens for you. That Yeah, well, well, one thing that, that I, I notice a lot in my more worried moments is this uh, phenomenon or concept called the, the upper limit problem. And this is something that consistently comes up for me and the, the basic idea is that we are uh, we become accustomed through our evolution and our family and our upbringing and everything to a certain level of happiness and abundance and success, wealth, love, and mm. when and when good things happen in our life to to push us beyond you know beyond that that realm that we're comfortable with beyond our upper limit, then uh, it, it makes us feel uncomfortable. And we're not, you know, our body and mind like fights back when we're, when we're pushing, pushing that upper limit are, you know, there are, there are symptoms of our body and our mind, you know, pushing back to try to bring us down into that level of comfort. Mm. And so, so for me, and it, it manifests in different people in different ways. And for me, my, my big one is worry. Mm. worry, anxiety. Some people, some people get angry. Some people get sick. Um, mm. you know, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll worry. And, and I, uh, I'll, I'll catch myself or sometimes, or I try to catch myself, you know, when, uh, you know, one example, when, when I sold my business, the, the biggest, best event in my career, I should have been ecstatic, excited, happy, you know, only this was the, the, most significant positive events that, that I've ever you know, had in my business. And I remember that day, some of my employees were kind of you know, fighting a little bit about this. I had some calls with them. They were trying to, you know, whatever, some, some issue. And I remember like, you know, through that day, I kind of had just like this, this, this like, you know, nagging, you know, worry about, about my team and, and my employees and, oh, and now this, this deal, but, oh, what about now there's this transition and, you know, what do we have to do for this? And it was just running and running and running. And, and I, I was worrying and, you know, it, it wasn't until later that day I was, I was practicing yoga to kind of, you know, calm myself down, you know, get centered. And it wasn't until, you know, midway through the practice that, that it hit me that these worries, like they're not, that's, that's not the problem. Uh, they're a symptom the problem is, is the upper limit problem. This amazing positive, uh, you know, event just happened to me. And like, I'm sitting here worrying about, you know, this, I'm, I'm up here. I should be up here, but like, I'm worrying about, you know, stuff down here. And, you know, so through yoga, getting more grounded, becoming more mindful, what I'm able to recognize that. And when, when you recognize that as your upper limit problem, the correct course of action is notice it you know, dismiss it and contemplate the, the positive event or things that's, you know, that's now pushing you, you know, up past your limit. And, you know, when you do that, you know, notice it, notice the worry or, you know, whatever the, the symptom, notice it, dismiss it, contemplate that positive. It just, it, 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 it like rushes over you as like a wave of, of, of positive energy and like warmth. And, you know, I was unable to experience that, uh, which, you know, again, through, through, through yoga, helping me to, you know, kind of calm down, uh, take a step back, uh, distance me from, from some of those worried thoughts. And, and yeah, this, this upper limit problem, it's something that, that I notice and it comes up, uh, you know, frequently when, when good things are happening and, you know, good things are happening and it's, it's trying to push me, push me up here. But sometimes I still feel, you know, being, being pulled down a little, some of these worry thoughts, negative thoughts. And, and yeah, it's a process and trying to continue to be more aware, uh, you know, more present, more mindful of these things so that you can notice them for what they are. 
uh, as opposed to, you know, feeling that they're a part of you. That totally makes sense. And I, I, I think everyone has an upper limit problem somewhere in their business. And, and that's why you see businesses plateau. You know, they, they grow a certain point and then they get to a, a certain size and they, they have trouble growing beyond that. And part of that's, you know, just organizational. You know, maybe they, they're missing some structure or some key people they don't have on the team. But it's also, you know, something energetic that the founder just isn't ready to expand beyond that level. And, and I, I believe it's possible to, to, to directly change that energetically and shift your thermostat, your upper limit. It's, it's like you've got a thermostat of how much money you're comfortable making or how big a company you're com- comfortable having. And you can go directly tweak with that thermostat, you know, energetically. So you don't have all the worry or health challenges or, or crises that, you know, people sometimes have. Yeah, that, uh, that uh, reminds me a lot of a, a book that I was reading recently and came up uh, a few times or a lot when I was, I was recently in Bali and it's uh, this book called Power Versus Force. And it mm. talks about how different emotional states have different like energy vibrations. And they did these you know, scientific tests to test people at different emotional states at the bottom, you know, anger, um, you know, at the top to you know, bliss, nirvana. And uh, these different emotional states, you know, from negative to, to positive have different, you know, charges or, you know, vibrations and they, they, they test these things. And, and the point that the book makes is, you know, if you want some positive, you know, positive outcomes, instead of trying to, you know, instead of trying to force this, you know, force things this way or push them that way, really, you know, to where the power comes from of, you know, raising, raising your vibration to that, you know, higher energy state. And when you do that, it, it attracts, you know, naturally will attract other things that are, that are at that positive level, uh, which seems s- similar to what, to what you were getting at. Yeah. That scale is called the Hawkins scale by the guy well, was one name for it. The guy who wrote the book, Mr. Hawkins. Um, and definitely a powerful thing to, to be conscious of what, where you are on that scale. So, you know, for what, one reason, it just lets you be aware if you're having a, you know, a bad day that, you know, here's where I am on the scale, here's what's going on, but also just so you can bump yourself up, you know, yeah, what would it take to go to the next level up on the scale, uh, using whatever techniques you want to use to get there. Um, lots of ways to go on the scale. So, and I think uh, the book Asking It's Given by Abraham Hicks t- has a similar kind of thing. They have like a, a list of 22 tools you can use to bump your vibration up at different levels. Meditation works at any level. It doesn't matter how depressed or suicidal you are. Meditation is always bump, bump a way to make that better. But other things like gratitude lists only work when you're at a certain level. If you're really depressed, writing gratitude lists doesn't really you know, bump up your vibration. <laughs> but when you're at a kind of uh, a higher level, it will get you to an even higher vibration. Mm-hmm. So very interesting. So you, you've had some tough times where you had to make staff cutbacks or, or, you know, talk with members of staff who are underperforming. Tell us about how you use radical candor in your business in yeah. those situations. And what, what exactly is radical candor for the people who have no idea what we're talking about here? So, so radical candor is, uh, my, my favorite, and I think the most effective uh, mode of communication. And, and so if you, you think about a graph, uh, you know, X axis, Y axis on one axis is, is how much you care. And on the other axis is how direct you are. And so radical candor is operating in that, that top right quadrant where you both care a lot and are direct. And it's, it's when we communicate in this, in this area, you care a lot and, and are direct that is going to be, you know, honest and effective with, with what you're trying to, you know, what you're trying to communicate versus as an example, if you, if you care a lot, but you're not direct, that's called ruinous empathy. <laughs> you can get, get a sense by the name of how effective that is. And, and that's something that I've, uh, you know, it's been a challenge for me. I am, I'm, I'm a people person. I, I, you know, like to think that I'm a, a nice guy. I don't like, um, you know, I, I, I try to please people. 
or I have, you know, tried to please people. And, and so a lot of times in communications with my team, it, it comes out as, you know, kind of uh, sugarcoating things and you're, you're not as direct as, you know, you should be, which can cause problems. Um, I, so when I, when I sold my business uh, or I sold the, the part of my business where most of the money was coming from, we still had the, the, the EU side, which at the time was not, was not making very much money. And I had this big team that was supporting, you know, the, the previously, you know, both sides of the business. And, and yeah, I was forced with some, some difficult decisions of, you know, what to do. And, and this was a time that I was, I really leaned on both my intuition and radical candor in order to, in order to effectively navigate the situation. And so, you know, there were a few people on my team that I could go either way. I, they were, they were good. They were doing a good job. I liked them. And, and I really wasn't sure what to do. First, I wasn't sure, you know, do I fire anyone? Do I keep them? Uh, it's, they're, they're, they're hard decisions. Uh, and, you know, within all the instances, anyone that I was sort of on the fence with, you know, I, I had to, you know, look in and, and, and feel what, you know, what was the right, right move there. And, and with them, you know, the, my, my gut was telling me that, that I had to let them go. And, you know, in doing so, and in having these conversations, it's important to, to approach them with radical candor. Um, I was honest, I was direct and, and I cared. They, they, they know that I care. I, I I've always cared. And, you know, part of that caring is doing what's best for, for them and, and the business. And, and in these, in this situation, it, wasn't, you know, holding on to them in the business was not, was not going to be best for anyone. They, if they weren't going to be a part of the long-term, the long-term business plans, then any, any additional time spent in the business where they couldn't pursue what could be better for their long-term was, it was a detriment to them as well as a detriment to the business. And so, so fast forward, I, I went forward with the cuts. I, you know, cut at the time was about a third of my team. We really condensed I was honest. I used radical candor and you know, that, that, you know, moment really became a catalyst and, and the business has since uh, rebounded in a huge way, really come together. The, the team has, you know, the, the, the remaining team has really, you know, bonded together. We've, we've evolved this amazing positive company culture. Um, you know, sales are up, business is growing and, and it wasn't until making these, these tough decisions, you know, listening to, to my gut of what I, of what I knew I had to do and, and following through approaching it, using radical candor, being honest, being direct, caring that has, has allowed my business to, you know, you know, from them continue to grow, continue to prosper to, to get to where we are today. Well, that sounds uh, great. Would you, could you share, you know, without naming someone's name, what, what exactly would you say, you know, how would you, Say, yeah. some, hey, say, tell someone that they're going to lose their job, but do it yeah. in a direct well, and caring yeah. way. So, so actually, I mean, I put thought, I, you know, wrote some thoughts down and, you know, I was kind of bugging some of these people like, Hey, you know, Hey, you're around to talk today. You're around to talk later today. Like let's, let's connect. And some of these people I, I, I didn't talk to that often. And so like, you know, okay, Nate. Yeah. Like, huh? hope everything's okay. Like I'm a little bit nervous, you know, ha 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 ha. And in my head, I'm like, Oh, great. <laughs> well, they already knew so, at some level something. Yeah. But, but so, so I started it, you know, immediately, um, you know, it's like, you know, Hey, uh, this isn't going to be an easy conversation. So I'm just going to go out and say it, you know, you know, we sold the, we sold the, uh, you know, big part of the business. I was making the money. We need to make some cuts and, 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 you know, this is a decision that, that I've made that, that the business needs to move forward. Um, you know, uh, we're going to be moving forward in this business, you know, without you, uh, you'll have, you know, one month, you know, uh, transition time and plus additional severance pay. And, uh, you know, just like, you know, laying it out, here's the situation. This was my decision. Um, do you have any questions and opening it up to them to allow them, uh, some, some space and, uh, you know, that was that over overwhelmingly, they were received positively, you know, Oh, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate that. I appreciate the communication, the honesty. 
it, it wasn't easy for some, you know, they, some, they, it's their job. They, they depend on this, but, but, but approaching it from this way, being honest, being direct, it's like, I, I still have a good relationship with these people. Uh, some of them I've, I've helped find other jobs. Some of them have, you know, helped with other things since in the business, like we're, we're, we're still friends and we're able to keep that relationship because, because I was honest, because I cared, because I was direct. Um, and, and that, you know, has, has enabled us to continue to have a positive relationship. That is fabulous. Uh, it's a great modeling for anyone who has a difficult conversation, whether it's firing or, or giving someone feedback on how they need to improve in order to keep their job. Um, and I think, you know, people value directness and, and honesty if it's done in a caring way. So I, I'm kind of curious. I, I actually drew out in the show notes a little, uh, four-way grid for the the four sides of this quadrant and i'm wondering what names we can come up with for the other two parts of the quadrant you said oh. you've got rad radical candor and ruinous yeah. empathy or the caring side of that yeah. quadrant but what's the uncaring side of uh, so if someone's direct and uncaring what do you yeah. call that uh, you could call it being an asshole <laughs> um <laughs> But, but, but actually is, is more effective than, you know, is, is better for, for everyone involved than, than ruinous empathy. You know, yeah, you might be, you know, kind of a dick about it, but, but at least you're commun you know, communicating honestly. Um, so we'll call that honest asshole. There, there you go. For, until we have a better name for it. Yeah. Maybe our listeners can suggest some uh, other <laughs> names that can be used there. And then sure. what about the, uh, the final part of the quadrant? That's where you're, you're not direct and you don't care. <laughs> I don't know. Apathetic. Uh, nothing good. <laughs> yeah. Apathetic dipwit. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. Apathetic liar, maybe. No, I don't think apathetic really comes into it, actually. It's uh, lying, duplic duplicitous, maybe. That just came into my head. Duplicitous. Um, duplicitous. What is, I, I don't know. Wait, I'll, <laughs> I'll come up with something after we've we, finished we, the we interview. We want to stay away from that I am curious. <laughs> well, I know, but it's good to be able to identify it in other people, right? Or in ourselves. Okay. You know, there are business people who, who are, they do lie. They don't, you know, they don't, maybe they just withhold the truth. Maybe they don't see it as lying, but then they're, they're not honest and, and they're really not caring. They don't demonstrate caring towards the people they work with. Mm -hmm. Plenty of entrepreneurs like that. I, I've met some of them. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think it's useful to have that. Yeah, that, frame of uh, framework yeah i was gonna say uh dichotomy but it's a quadricotomy right <laughs> there you go. um very interesting well i've learned something new already several mm -hmm. times in this interview um so i i think radical candor naturally leads us to a discussion of transparency because i know you you did a fair amount about being transparent in your business and sharing plans with your the team members and the business numbers, the profit and loss. Tell us about why you did that. Yeah, continue well, to do I, it. Yeah. So, you know, with, with my team and my business, it's really like, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to lead and not, uh, I'm trying to lead people, um, you know, show them the vision, get everyone on board with the vision so that they can, so that everybody can, you know, move forward in that direction. And you're not able to do that unless you share the vision, unless you share what's going on. And so that's been for the last, maybe, I guess I started maybe a year and a half ago, um, integrating into the business, you know, like transparency, um, you know, our sales numbers, our, our, you know, sales, our profit every week, the whole team, you know, the whole team works on a weekly report that shows all the numbers. Are we making money? Are we losing money? How much are we making? Um, you know, where's the money coming from? Uh, additionally, something that I've, I've been doing in my business now for maybe the last year and a half. And one of my favorite things in the business is uh, Wednesday weekly updates. So every Wednesday I record a video kind of talking through, I, I, you know, share a principle, um, 
you know, go into updates about the business, what I'm thinking, what's going good, what's going bad, different parts of the business. And, and yeah, like I've gotten, you know, amazing positive feedback from my team about how, you know, it, this allows them to feel, you know, clued into to everything that's going on to, you know, they don't, I, I my, my team always, you know, consistently they push for, you know, where do you see this business going? You know, what's the direction, you know, what's your vision? And, and I get it. These people, like they're, they, you know, they, they've signed up for, for this. They've, they've signed up for me. They're supporting me. And, you know, I've got great people and, and, and they, they, they want to, they want to know what they've signed up for, you know, where they're going, where, where I'm taking them. And if I want to keep them, I, I need to, I need to share that with them. I need to, I need to show them, you know, where this is going so that they, they can one, you know, make sure we're on the same page that they're on board. And, and not just no, but then, you know, these are smart people. These are, I have amazing people that work with me and by, by sharing the vision, by getting in sync with the vision, it allows them then to, you know, operate under that, to, to push things forward in their own way. They don't need me when I, when I share the vision and when we're, you know, consistent uh, and in sync on the vision, then, then they know in their, how their role fits in, how the different, you know, they don't need to come to me and ask for what to do every time because th they know what direction we're going in. And so this, you know, the, the, the tasks and projects underneath it, they're able to, they're able to, you know, push those forward and they, they know what to do to, to get us to where we want to go because they know where we're going and they know where we want to go. I, I think that's very powerful. Um, do you share any of this material outside your business to motivate future employees or? So I, I haven't, I've, I've been thinking about this a lot though, honestly. And in and, and this quarter, my, one of my one things is, is sharing more and teaching more for my team. And, you know, with the idea of like, I, I, it feels good for me to create content. I love extroverting my intuition, sharing ideas, sharing what I've learned, sharing things that I'm excited about. And, and yeah, part of the thinking is if I can, if it's good for my team, if they like it, you know, these are things that also could, could help other people. And, and yeah, I mean, if, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm a little shy <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. to, to share sometimes, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I want to, and that's a direction I want to continue moving in. And if I knew people were interested, I, I would be happy. What's, to your in what's your intuition say about sharing this in a <laughs> wider way? It's telling me that that's what I need to do. <laughs> okay. I think you got your answer there. <laughs> so do you, do you share all the, the business numbers, the profit and loss balance sheets, you know, sales this week? Yeah. I mean, uh, profit and loss sales. Yeah. Everyone, everyone is, you know, transparent to that. Not everyone pays attention to be honest. Like people yeah. that aren't, that don't, own the business aren't they don't care as much about the numbers i've found some people do but uh, they, they may not understand them either uh, most people are not trained to be able to read a profit and loss statement unless you spend time to explain yeah. how to read it yeah uh so you know some some care or pay more attention than others some some get really excited about it yeah <laughs> well when, when, yeah. when the numbers are good I mean, when, when I've done that in the past, I had to do a fair amount of education as to what it was. And people were interested, you know, why are we spending this much on our phone system? You know, why are we spending this on advertising? You know, and, and sometimes they, you know, sometimes I could explain why, but other times it was like, well, maybe we need to change that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It's good to get a, a second set of eyes, I think, um, on a lot of yeah. stuff like that. And then do you share salaries as well or within the team or outside? Um, don't generally share salaries. There are some, some people know, you know, some or, or some of the other salaries. And, and I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure about that one. You know, I think, I mean, uh, I think my team is paid fairly. There's no like, you know, no one's getting paid so much more or less. They're, if they're you know, pretty, pretty clumped together. But, but yeah, you know, I wonder what, if that would help or what benefit that would be, you know, I, I, I don't know. We're, it's something that we don't, it's currently not public, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm open to the idea of it. I'm, I'm just not, I guess at this point, I don't see, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, some businesses like government 
organizations, that's just public record what people's salaries are. Other businesses like uh, Buffer is an example of this, the social media thing, they, they have open salaries. You know, yeah, yeah. You, and it's clear what, what the criteria is to, to make a different amount. You know? mm-hmm. So um, it's an interesting idea. So I, I know recently you were in Bali um, and um, tell us why you went there and, and what you learned and, and why you had to leave suddenly. <laughs> well, yeah, so I, I was in, I've been to Bali a, a, a number of times and was, was there for about a month in January with my family. And it, it, it was amazing. Like that was the longest stint that I had stayed in, in, in Ubud in Bali and and yeah yoga capital of the world we must say (laughs) yoga uh spirituality i mean amazing food amazing people and and i was there and it it felt it felt good there and when i left honestly i i i kept thinking about coming back and it wasn't until it wasn't until i guess about a month ago in september that i then had the opportunity to to go back there and, and being there was, was amazing. I feel like it really, you know, hit me at, at the right time. And just like the, the overwhelming message that you get being in Bali and, and just, you know, encouraged and, and, you know, push forward to just, you know, be your authentic self. There's all these different, you know, uh, ecstatic dance and contact dance and authentic relating workshops and these things. And, you know, every week there's all these things that just encourage you and everyone to, you know, just to be yourself, be your authentic self. Um, you know, what do you care more about? What, you know, what feels good for you or, or what other people think. And, you know, this message really, really hit me at, at the right time as, you know, as in right now in my life, what I, I feel driven to do is to put myself out there more authentically. Um, you know, have conversations like this to, you know, just be, be honest with, with who I am and, and, and share my, you know, my honest thoughts and values and, and, and opinions with, you know, with the goal of, of, you know, putting my authentic self out there into the universe and, 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 and seeing who that resonates with, seeing what that attracts. And so going to Bali, having this message reinforced was exactly what I needed, you know, at that time. And, and, and has pushed me, continued to push me forward in this direction. Um, unfortunately, the trip was cut a bit short by this pending volcano eruption, but the plan is to, is to uh, return to Bali uh, when, whenever is prudent. <laughs> well, that is good. And I appreciate how honest you've been uh, and, you know, during this interview. Um, and I have a uh, an honest question to ask you if you're prepared for it. All right. So on a scale of zero to 10, where zero would be completely lying and 10 is totally honest and transparent, how, how honest are you being right now? Nine? Nine-ish? Yeah. I mean, you know, Nine, everything... Yeah. Yeah, so what would it nothing. take for you to get to a 10 right now in this moment with our audience? <laughs> I, well, I think I'm, 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 I'm close. You know, I've, I've really been, been, you know, it's been like, I, I'm, I'm on this mission right now to, to be my authentic self and, and, you know, be consistent with, you know, who I am. And, and in, in this interview, for example, you know, I've, you know, every answer, like there's, there isn't that inconsistency. Um, it, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm being honest and, and I'm sharing my, my experience, my thoughts. And, and in doing that, you know, I notice it, it feels good, uh, you know, versus the other side, if you, you know, kind of go against, you know, if you go against your, you know, your inner, your feeling, intuition, uh, you know, authentic self, you, you feel it. It doesn't feel right. And, 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 and so, yeah, I think that I've, you know, more and more continued to, and, you know, you know, been, you know, striving to, to, you know, act only, only as my authentic self to, to, to get to that full 10, uh, just, you know, abandon, um, abandon the doubts, you know, lean in fully, accept, 
uh, and, 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 and that's it. Just, you know, commit fully. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm almost, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And, and, and to get that, that final last step is just, you know, total, uh, you know, yeah, just, you know, fully committing myself, uh, you know, to that accepting and, and we're, we're, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm here to support you. That's why I asked the question, you know, Thank you. Uh, what came into my mind when you were talking is have you ever considered doing an interview while taking psychedelics? Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, depends on how, how, you know, I guess the strength of, of, of the psychedelics, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for, up for experiences. Maybe we can schedule a, a, a round two, um, you know, and, yes. and experiment with some, some, some different, uh, states of consciousness. Right. It might be, might be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've certainly tried ayahuasca and that gave me lots of intuitive messages, but I don't think I'd like to do an interview while on ayahuasca because it involved a lot of vomiting and diarrhea. So yeah, I'm that not might sure. not be. Not sure how effective <laughs> you would be able to, to respond to anything <laughs> while, while. Right. Well, I, I, I have experimented with microdosing on um, San, San Pedro is another, it's a cactus you can get in Latin America. It's legal there and it, it's legal in some US states, depending on, or, and mm. countries. Um, and I've tried microdosing with that and that, that's been an interesting experience. So well, maybe, maybe perhaps, next time. Perhaps that's the answer, not to go for the full psychedelic <laughs> thing, but just, yeah, there you go. Well, we'll look out for that. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show, Nate, and looking forward to seeing you at DCPKK next week. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a, a really, really So fun if folks want to be able to, to uh, find you online. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. And if people want to find you online, what's the best way to do that? Yeah. So, uh, l- like I was saying, you know, right now I feel, you know, driven and compelled to, you know, put myself out there authentically, share my, my thoughts, my experiences. And, and yeah, if, if any of this resonates, if any of this you agree with that you like, or, or don't like, you know, please, um, you know, yeah, reach out. Um, I'm trying to, you know, put myself out there to, you know, make more connections and, and see what sort of, you know, abundance and opportunities we can't, we can't, you know, pursue together. Um, my team, we're, we're, you know, looking to grow our team. Um, we're looking for people to partner with investing. Um, if you like yoga, you know, these are all, uh, I'm happy to chat. I want to know you. So you can check out my website, uh, nateginsberg.com. Um, get in touch. Would, would love to meet you. If you like yoga and travel pictures, you can uh, check out my Instagram at Nate Ginsberg and yeah, looking forward to, uh, connecting. And, uh, and thanks again, Michael, for having me.